All right, fellas, in for a treat. You can see we got loop regional chest workout, VHS conversion. So you know the quality is going to be top notch on this sucker. You know how I do it. It's uh, about a 30 minute video. So are we going to watch the whole 30 minute video? No, nah, we're going to scroll through it. You know, I'm going to give my commentary on bits and pieces. Hopefully we cover the gist of it. We'll see what happens. Look at that static, that white noise. Oh. Look at that resolution. I love it already. I love it. <laughs> the Rocky, like the trumpets. Just we're freaking ready to go to war here. Hi, I'm Bill Dobbins from Muscle and Fitness Magazine. Bill Dobbins! Forget about power and effect. Let the ego out of your gym. Body goes about strong in general by how much you uh, work out and assess it. You don't have to prove yourself by half the best three or four hundred pounds. You know, this is just disheartening to see though, because the, the only footage I've seen of Louis train in the past was the pumping art iron classic footage where he's doing the freaking clean up. Ah, 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 right? And it's like, I don't know how much weight he has on, but I always thought it was like 225. For all I know, it's probably less, but. That's how I always think about the day. Oh, man, what a monster. Just horse cocking weights. And all of a sudden, I'm just, I'm here just all these notions that you shouldn't be lifting heavy. And it's about championship physiques. And it's not about proving how much you can lift. Bill Dobbins saying that these bodybuilders pride themselves on 500 pound benches, but not Louie. And it's like, damn, Louie. Used to be one of my favorites. But I feel like this video, unfortunately, is maybe going to change my mind. Because I, I, I like intensity, I like horse cock and weights, you know? The bodybuilders no matter how strong you look, it's how you look. That's why I call it bodybuilding, not power building. I don't know, let's just get to it. I mean, this is just, I just hate it. Disheartening, disgusting to hear that. Now remember, some days you may not feel strong. Take 90s, you don't have to take 120 every time. Your body may say, okay, I want to stick with 90 today, I want to stick with 80. But each set, each breath had to be perfect and be just as good as every other. Um, hmm, that's kind of a sticky situation. Because while well, I understand what he's saying, you're not always going to be peaked at your peak strength. You know, like, you don't have to go up to the 120s. You can stick to the 90s for that day. I mean, that seems that's a pretty big freaking difference. That's only 75% of what you're normally using. Tater top, my goodness. So... Oh, it's almost like you're just really not trying that day. And I feel like that's kind of comes down to the notion of people going to the gym just for the pump. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're going and just, just to get a pump, like you might volumize, you look good, you'll feel good, but you kind of half-ass the day, didn't you? Now I would say it's like if you usually work with 120s and maybe you're stopping at 110s or 115s because you're not feeling quite as snappy and explosive that day, that's okay. But I'm talking, I'm only going to stick with the 90s when I normally do the 120s. That seems like uh, you can't kind of half arson it, in my opinion. This is not very light, but eventually I think your body really takes over because when, once you learn to appreciate the movement, perfect the form, and the body and the feeling goes together, everything else uh, takes over control. And then you. So I start very light. I agree. I start very light on anything. Even a bench press, anytime I bench, I'll always start with a 45 pound empty bar, just 45 pounds, right? And you feel it all, right? You feel the movement, right? With the dumbbell, light dumbbells, feel it, squeeze it. As you warm up and you get progressively heavier and heavier, it's the same thing, right? And then you keep going heavier. So then obviously now your mind is off of what's happening and now you're just focused on horse cocking the weights. It's the best of both worlds. This is a typical example of like, you know, saying it doesn't matter how much weight. I mean, obviously he's just saying the whole time, it doesn't matter how much weight you lift. And it's not about the weight, but at the end of the day, like, the weight's a big freaking part of it. And this video is already getting monotonous and disgusting. And I'm kind of ashamed. I feel like we shouldn't even be making this video right now. You really have to think about it. Every rep, am I doing it correctly? Am I doing it correctly? I mean, I feel like you don't have to think about if you're doing reps correctly after like your first year of training or something. Right? So it's good advice for uh, beginners that are learning how to lift. But, uh, I mean, once you like learn how to, it's pretty basic stuff. You know what I mean? A bench, a squat, a deadlift, 
you learn the gist of it, you freaking just do it. You know what I mean? There's a million cues and stuff you get obsessed about, overcomplicated, but at the end of the day, it's not that complicated. It's not that complicated. You know what I mean? Just freaking retract the shoulder blades, unrack that sucker, and press. Really not that complicated. And like, oh, what? Oh, am I doing this right? Good happen. It was so important. It's the right to pick. What a physical specimen, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm. I'm just disgusted by this advice, but then he's just looking just yoked and just chiseled out of granite. Ampers, and you won't have to worry about changing later on. Think that. Oh, come on now. This is just, this video's not really They will just stand and suffer it. Break up. They are. This is so boring. That is a bust. I never like to do flies at the very end because to me, I found you do benches. Or dumbbells, I think you're gonna do incline backs, you do a dumbbell, but then when you go to fly, I feel like I'm starting to go through the motion. And I just say to myself, why not maybe go a little bit heavier in the fly to really isolate the field muscle? Because once you do another pressing movement afterwards, the chance of fatigue, but your arms are fresh and forced to work harder. So I to Yeah, that's good advice. I do like that actually. And I have done that in the past, and I liked it of starting the workout with the flies. Uh, with dumbbell flies. Now, a lot of people don't like dumbbell flies. And, you know, the peck DAC and the peck fly machine all the, are all the rage now. But I feel like the dumbbell fly, right, the money is at the freaking, you know, the, the long-range partials or whatever. It's this phase right here. Just doing this and not worrying about necessarily from here to here, right? Just stretch. Stretch and pulse it. That's what I find I really like about stretch and pulse. Stretch and pulse it. Um, and then working up to heavier weight, obviously being careful, you can't go too heavy. Definitely it's moving. It'll snap your shit up, but, um, you know, starting obviously super light and then working up 10 pound increments, right? And as it starts to feel a little sketchy, yeah, you don't need to do it anymore. But, uh, starting with flies because everyone does do it as finishers and a lot of people do it, um, from any, anyone I've seen at the gym that does dumbbell flies, does like 30 pounds to the tops. And uh, when I was doing them, I was, I was shooting for like a hundred, okay? And the only reason I stopped doing that is because of the the Arnold program that I'm currently doing. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, when I did do the flies for the first couple times, because my body wasn't used to it, my pecs were more sore than they'd ever been just from doing this with the dumbbells. So I think that that's, uh, that's solid advice. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, you know, very cookie cutter info in this so far, and he's kind of just poo pooing all over heavy lifting. So it's kind of despicable and disgusting to hear. But uh, they got the fly advice. Being important though, when you do it, like I said before, you really concentrate on the stretching. But you right. come up, don't work on your arm, keep a slightly bent. Just imagine you're doing cable cross over. Yeah, yeah, focus on the stretch. Don't lock out your arms. Just this sucker right here, stretch. Stretch, hold the stretch, pulse, stretch. Incline dumbbell press. Oh, wow. So he's just a, just a big incline guy. The chest or pectoral muscle. Incline dumbbell press. Love the music. What time? I think I'm related to 20 degrees. Interesting. You clean the hand on a slight angle like a 45. I get a complete stretch because if I have my hand straight ahead, it's activating too much of the shoulder. Yeah, I, I'm the same with the dumbbells too. I like to have a slight diagonal grip. Because the way that I see it, it's like if I'm using a barbell, I'm forced in this fully pronated position. And dumbbells are a lot easier because you have this you know, better movement of your hand position. Therefore, you can horse cock massive loads in a much safer manner because obviously you're not forced in this position, right? Um, but anyway, starting with uh, slight incline, I like that. Slight incline dumbbell bench. I think he's giving just a bunch of cookie cutter tips throughout this, so let's just see what he's doing here. So slight incline. Next, he's going to the dumbbell flies. Loom relies on incline barbell presses. Incline barbell. Interesting. Interesting. You don't generally do barbell presses, but you do incline barbell presses. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, because to me, I find that it's more comfortable and a lot safer. You realize flying, you have a dead weight. 
But when you do incline bar bar press it, you can bring the bar to the neck. And if the movement, it's not a power movement like bench press, because you think people with their bench press, they handle maybe 50% more than the handle of the incline. And the incline is very important to get that completion. Not too much of a steep angle. I think the angle should be 30 degrees, no more. Once you go to steep with the angle, then you take a little... Well, I like that advice, the low angle incline. I don't really understand what he's saying about being less injury prone on the incline. I mean, but I guess a lot of people tear their pecs on flat bench, probably because they can handle more weight. But then again, I mean, if we're saying, can you tear your pack on an incline? I think we've all seen the Larry Wheels video, the guy snapping his pec out of this oblivion, right? So it's definitely, I mean, personally for me, I feel like I'm at much bigger risk to a heavy incline. Uh, than heavy flat bench, but uh, to each his own, and uh, I do like the low incline. I've always felt like a low incline is you feel that a ton in your chest. The problem is when you go to the gym, you're kind of forced into one incline position if you're doing a barbell bench. Um, I don't know if it's a 45 degree or so, but I did like that he put the bench on the block to just give it that ever so slight incline for the dumbbell. Because um, we got to think about that sometimes. We don't. You don't necessarily have to work with the pins that they have for the incline. You know what I mean? Whether it's like zero, uh, 20, 40, 60, or whatever. I don't know how they are. However, they work in fifteen degrees, maybe 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. I think that's maybe how they work. But you can just prop the bench a little bit. Put it at ten. You know what I'm saying? Or you can put it at fifteen, and then prop the bench to get it to like twenty. So it's just ways to manipulate the angle to work for your benefit. Dumbbell pull up. Wow, everyone just pull up. Why is old as much as they do the chest? However, bodybuilders like Lou Frigno frequently include this movement in their chest routines because it tends to stretch and expand the entire rib cage area. Has that been proven to be a true statement? I feel like that's like old school bro science, but uh, Mama knows. I've been putting her through the like Arnold workouts too. The dumbbell pullover. See, you can watch Big Louie do it. Here, pay attention. You need to learn. Fresh. Cable crossover. Cable crossovers are actually a kind of flying movement yeah. done with cables. Using cable crossovers are a, a pretty much a decline fly. You know, now that I've been doing flies more or whatever before the Arnold program, I was doing incline flies. Uh, then I was doing obviously flat flies, just trying all different flies. And then when you do a cable crossover, it's essentially it's a decline fly. So it's uh, it's interesting. He's got. Uh, Let's go through the program real fast. So it's incline dumbbell bench, then it's dumbbell fly, then it's barbell incline bench, and then it's cable crossover. So two different types of flies, and two different types of incline bench. I think one of the worst things to happen to a bodybuilder is a pectoral tear. Oh, yeah. That'll screw you. My biggest nightmare, pec tear. Biggest nightmare. Let's see, what, let's see if he's got any tidbits. I'm doing shoulder presses, you can't do dip. When you do squatting movement and they complete surgery, I have a few friends of mine that tore the pack. Why? They want to bench press 550 pounds. One of them never going to compete again. So that's why it's important to really respect your body. And I know it sounds like boring for me to say over and over, don't tear the weights that are ridiculous for your, uh, for your own uh, body, but respect the weight and respect your body. Yeah. There are, of Fair course, enough. a number of other popular chest exercises, and Lewis tried them all during... But, with that being said, we can't live in fear, you know what I'm saying? I think that's why it's important, for the most part, you always use full range of motion, that you get the tendon used to that range of motion, and then if you do things like flies, you do like a the, get a big stretch that goes beyond the range of motion you'd have for a bench, um, and then that you just you stretch, stretch your pecs out, like with the doorway, with a wall, you know what I mean? Do this kind of stuff. You know, I feel like a lot of bodybuilders, they don't. They just get super, super tight. They do partials with benching. You know what I mean? They're not going all the way down. So they're getting super strong here. And the weight gets heavier, forces them a little bit lower than they're usually going. And that's when they tear the pack, right? Or if they're really doing touch and go or like a, the bouncing technique. Um, so I feel like if you just have, you know, you do full range of motion, you stretch. You do like weighted stretches with flies and all that. I don't think it should be a concern, but I can totally relate because I mean, at the end of the day, I've torn my quadriceps tendon, my patellar tendon, and it does take years to get back to where you were. And uh, it's, you know, it's just it's, it's a scary thing because when those tendons go, they just blow out of nowhere. So uh, 
uh, it's just like he's he, but at the end of the day, you can't live in fear, you know what I mean? You're just never gonna press up you because you don't want to tear a tendon, right? There's not really one way to train. You have different choices. And other bodybuilders need to train like this. Like for example, my workout never begin all the time with dumbbell presses. Sometimes I start with the incline barbell presses, I go to flies, then I do the flat dumbbell presses. I change what I mean, that's the thing for the most part, though, too. I feel like every program that's out there, it's not what people are doing all the time. You know what I mean? It's a general, like, okay, this is something to try out. You know what I mean? And again, him, I'm sure it's different every time he goes to the gym, right? But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, that's why like, he's also these, like, best chest and back workout on his YouTube videos. Like, best thing you can do. It's like, uh... Some people respond good to the other exercises. Some people are stronger, whatever their leverage is and all that kind of stuff. Some exercises work for some people. Some don't work for others. There is no best, right? It's only best for you, right? And the best for you might not be the best for you in a month from now, depending on, you know, tweaks, tendonitis, all that kind of stuff. Or you've adapted to it. You've got nothing else out of it. It's time to switch it up. When he first began training, Lou Ferrigno would often work out twice a day, six days a week. Nowadays, he's learned that less is more. It's so funny that they say that, that like when they first started, it started with six days a week, twice a day, right? It's like how all these guys, like, oh, yeah, I, I watched a different video too. It was like Jay Cutler. It's like, oh, I used to spend whatever hours in the gym. Or, and it's like, would you do that anymore? Oh, it's, I don't need to. My point is, is, like, everyone, like, seems to really have built their, like, <laughs> got themselves to where they were from the way they, you know, they started with the two-a-days. And, and that's like, oh, but they've learned that they don't need that much. But it's like, but that probably helped get them to where they were. You know what I mean? I feel like all these times, a lot of times it's like, oh, yeah, it's, I just did way too much when I first started. It's like, or did that really build the foundation, gave you an incredible foundation and then you just, it's easier to maintain than it is to build in the first place. So I just, from my experience, you know, I've been training 25 years. And anytime, like when I had rehab for my knee, I was forced to do uh, lower body every single day for rehab. And it wasn't just like range of motion, stretching rehab. I was doing squats, deadlifts, Bulgarian split squats, lunges, leg extensions, leg press, all this stuff every single day because it was essentially... I was being paid to recover as quickly as I could, right? So uh, they trained me like as hard as they could every single day in my lower body just to get it back to where it needed to be. But because I loved training, I wanted to train my on my own every single day as well. Well, I'm trained, I'm forced to train my lower body every single day. So of course I'm doing, you know, chest, back, arms, shoulders every day on my own as well. And I'll tell you, I made incredible progress because I was forced to train for four hours, four hours a day on average, five days a week. But I was training seven days a week. But for five of those seven days, I was training two a day. So I was doing, um, let's see, I was doing 10, I was doing 12 workouts a week, right? Uh, and hard. And I think I benefited substantially from it. So it's not like, oh, I've learned I don't need that much. It's like, no, you've just, you've built an awesome foundation. You've built a fantastic freaking structure. And now you just don't need that much to uh, maintain or to, you know, put a little icing on the cake. But I think that that's where, like a lot of these guys, he's like, oh, when you first started training, but it's like, what we know from Louis, I mean, this is like in the 90s, I think. What we know from Louis is he started in like the 70s or something and in pumping iron in 1975 or whatever it was, like he was, you know, freaking massive. And was that from his two a days? You know what I mean? Like it's, I just, I'm a firm believer that more is more, right? And more, it's like, oh, you need to learn that less is more. It's like, if he was going to the gym, training hard twice a day, like he probably would be better off. Not saying that he would feel better and he'd probably be lethargic and, you know, get tired and worn out and maybe be more at risk of injury. But if you avoided all those kinds of things, like you fought through the lethargy from the fatigue and training so much and you didn't get injured and you did all the sort of stretching and all that kind of stuff, like I feel like you would, you would come out a little bit more ahead than just doing the, you know, five-day split or whatever. Just my two cents.